week on Faithless. God does not see you as a piece of junk. He sees you as his masterpiece. Glory to God. Woo! Somebody shout amen. Numbers, the 13th chapter. Numbers, chapter 13. Glory to God. Somebody say, glory to God. Hallelujah. Numbers, the 13th chapter. <coughs> and I'm going to read from verse 25. Well, we can read from verse 23. This is the event when Moses sent out 12 spies to go and spy out the land and to bring word back to God, uh, to, to Moses, to take the people into the promised land. You see, there needs to come a time in your life where you transition into the promised land. How many of you are tired of walking in the wilderness? Hmm? There are believers today that for years spend time, spend their time wandering in the wilderness. But God wants to take you into your wealthy place. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. God wants to take you into your healthy place. Say amen to that. Amen. God wants to take you into your God-given destiny. You're not supposed to be living life on a frustrated level. But there are literally millions of believers that are living life on a frustration level. God wants to eliminate frustration out of your life. Say amen. Now that pertains to your life as a person. That pertains to your life as a couple, as a married couple. That pertains to your, to your job, that pertains to your home, to your family, to your children. God does not want that you flounder and wander about in the wilderness. Because those who spend too long in the wilderness eventually die in the wilderness. And the scripture says, the apostle Paul says, but with many of them God was not well pleased because they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now I want you to lift up your hands and say this after me. Say, God is not pleased when I am overthrown. Say this after me. God is not pleased when I am defeated. Say it one more time. Say, God is not pleased when I am overthrown in the wilderness. So this morning, I want to get you out of the wilderness. And cause you to think different to take you into your promised land. And then we're going to discover why are some people floundering in the wilderness? Why are they wandering forever in the wilderness? One of the reasons why you'll discover as we read the scriptures that they, God did not take them straight through from Egypt into the promised land, but how to take them into the wilderness is because the Hebrew people were slaves. They had a slave mentality. And the scripture says they were not used to war. And if they have to go straight through into the, into the promised land and have to do some battles, because they don't know how to war, right, they will collapse and run back into Egypt. Are you listening? And so when you are in the wilderness, you've got to learn quickly how to fight. Are you, are you listening? The more you don't learn how to fight, the longer you're going to stay in the wilderness. Are you listening to me? So when, if you feel, because sometimes you talk to, to Christians, and they, have, they are very religious minded. Wimpy, there's a bit of an echo on this. Uh, can you just, just give me a bit of treble down the bass a little bit? And Sometimes Christians, when you talk to them, they are very religious. I don't know about you, but I've encountered people. He said, how are you doing today, brother? Well, I'm in the wilderness. 
Have you ever heard people say that? I'm in the world. Well, how long have you been there? I don't know, but I've been there for a long time. And then the scripture talks to us about the valley of Baca. Right? The valley of tears and misery. And some believers, not only the, the, the Psalms say we are going through the valley of Baca, but some of us, we are living at number one Baca Street, Baca State, in the Baca country. But we're supposed to be go, transitioning. Amen. Going through the valley of Baca, making a pool, praise God. Say amen. amen. An everlasting spring. Glory to God. So, you got to get out of wilderness and learn to fight. And the quicker you learn to fight, the quicker you'll get out of the wilderness. Say amen, saints. All right, Numbers 13. So, we're going to read from verse 21. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men came to Hamath, Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it upon, they bear it between two upon a staff. Pretty big grapes. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and unto Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them all the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where you sent us and surely it flows with milk and honey. Everybody say, surely. It flows with milk and honey. As if God ever lies. God never lies. Come on, say after me. God never lies. All right. Now, look in your Bible here. Surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Now look at verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. I want you please to circle the word and nevertheless. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw, on the line that in your Bible, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea. Now look at the uh, litany of uh, um, information that they are giving to the people of God. I mean, they are aware of all the problems. And in life, you will encounter people who can tell you all about problems, but can never tell you about solutions. Hmm? There are people who are professionals. There are people who are experts at showing you where the problem is at. But they do not know how to solve problem. And that's the reason why when you read the book of Daniel, the scripture says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. He could dissolve doubts, right? And in the days of the father, King Nebuchadnezzar, solve problems for your fathers. Are you listening? Now, Daniel was a problem solver. But many times you will encounter people who are problem making people. Are you listening? Now, verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Everybody say this after me. Say, let's go up at once. Say it again. Let's go up at once and possess it. 
Look at the next few words. For we are well able to overcome it. Come on, lift up your hands and say, we are well able to overcome it. Now say this after me. Say, whatever the devil has thrown against me, I am well able to overcome it. To borrow a word from President Obama, yes, we can. <laughs> Come on, lift up your hands and say, yes, we can. Come on, say, yes, I can. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, yes, I can. And then tell them, yes, I will. Amen. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're fixing to do, but as for me, I'm going into my promised land. Yes, I can, and yes, I will. So help me, God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Defeat is not even <laughs> in my thinking. Praise God. Say amen. All right. Now, Caleb still the people. Lord, help us. We need some Caleb in this church. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're going to be like anybody, be like Caleb and Joshua. Don't be like the other ten spies that brought evil report. Amen. Say amen. Caleb still the people before Moses and says, let us go up at once. Now, say after me, let's go up at once. Another way of saying let's go up at once is we can do it now. Say now. now. Say I can do this now. What does Hebrews 11 verse 1 says? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When is faith? Not tomorrow. Faith is not yesterday. Faith is not in a sweet by and by, but now faith is. Somebody shout, faith is now. Say, now faith is. When is faith? Faith is right now. You are serving a right now God. He's got right now power. He's got right now blessing. And if you connect with right now faith, there will be a miracle breakthrough right now in your life. Amen. Caleb still the people. Before Moses and says, let's go up at once for and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the man that went up with him said, we be not able. <laughs> yes, we can. No, we can't. Now, which one are you going to be? Which group are you going to be? Yes, we can. Oh, no, we can't. The choice is yours. Amen. The Blood of Favor by Dr. Glenn Arecchion shows us how salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Then he explains how blessings are within the blood as well. The Blood of Favor is a step-by-step -step process to the victory in your life held in the precious blood of Christ. Discover the sevenfold blessings, keys of protection, and more as outlined by Dr. Arecchion. Get your copy of The Blood of Favor today at bookstores everywhere or by ordering online for $18, including shipping and handling at glenarecchion.org. Amen. Now, how many of you here today, you are in the Yes, We Can group? Can I see your hands? Hallelujah. Amen. If, you, if you're in the No, We Can, I don't want to hear from you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, now. But the man that went up with him said, We are not able to, get, to go against these people, for they are stronger than we. Never fought. But in their mind, they thought that these people were stronger than them. Hmm. And they brought up an evil report of the land. I want you please to underline that. There are people today who are full of doubt and unbelief that will bring an evil report upon the promises of God. Yeah, brother, I know the Bible says that, but get your butt out of the way. Amen. <clears throat> they brought an evil report of the land, and when they had searched unto the children, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land. The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Well, how'd you get back there? If the people eats up the inhabitants thereof, how'd you get back? Huh? 
Look to me, you didn't, you didn't get eaten up. And all the people there that we saw, underline the word we saw, we saw, in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants. Again, on the line in your Bible. We saw the giants. The sons of Anak, which come of the giants. Let's all we're together now, please. And we were in our own sight as what? Read it again. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Write this down. The way you see yourself is how the enemy will see you. The way you see yourself is how the devil will treat you. If you see yourself as a grasshopper, the devil will treat you like a grasshopper. Amen. If you see yourself as weak, inferior, timid, being cursed generationally, if that's how you see, if that's how you see yourself, I'm the wrong color, I'm too thin, I'm too fat, I've got too much hair. I don't have enough hair. If you determine your life by how you see yourself, and you see yourself from a negative standpoint, rather than seeing yourself the way God sees you, how does God see you? Well, let me show you one scripture how God sees you. Glory to God. Put your finger here in Numbers 13. Ephesians, the second chapter. Praise Jesus. Somebody say, Praise Jesus. Ephesians, the second chapter, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. We're going to read verse 8 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Now, say this after me. Say, I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can do. Say it again. I am what the Bible says I am. Now, say this after me. I am not what people says I am. I am what God says I am. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 8 and verse 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. Lift up your hands and say, I'm saved. I'm saved. And that not of yourself, it is what? The gift of God. Right? Amen. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's read verse 10 together, please. Let's read verse 10. Are you ready? Let's read verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now lift up your hands and say, I am his workmanship. Say it again. I am his workmanship. One Bible says you are his craftsmanship. But the Greek word for the word workmanship is the Greek word poema, P-O-E-M-A, from which we derive our English word poem. So you are God's poem. Lift up your hands and say, I'm God's poem. When God made you, glory to God, when you were born, God was writing a poem. Say amen. And the word poema means literally in the Greek text means masterpiece. Woo, come on, lift up that hand right now and say, I am a masterpiece. Now, I know you think you're short, but you are a short masterpiece. And I, you might think that you're fat, but you are a fat masterpiece. Say amen, somebody. When I'm too white, then you're a white masterpiece. When I'm too black, then you're a black masterpiece. Glory to God. There is nothing wrong with you. Come on, put your hands your belly and say, I am God's masterpiece. God does not see you as a piece of junk. He sees you as his masterpiece. Glory to God. Woo, somebody shout amen. You are the righteousness of God. You are created unto good works. You are blessing the city and you are blessing the field. You are on top and you're not beneath. You're the head and you're not the tail. Say amen, saints. That's how God sees you. You are the healed and not the sick. You are the blessed and not the broke. Say amen. Come on, lift up your hands. I'm the blessed. I'm not the broke. I'm the healed. I'm not the sick. You were once lost, but you are now saved. Say amen, somebody. And you are on your way to heaven. Glory to God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's good news. That's, good. That's a good place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hand in your chest. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we got to confess 
Like, like the word says, every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I say it every day, glory to God. I don't look at myself and say, oh, I'm not going to make it. No, I'm going to make it. Let me tell you this. If anybody's going to make it in this church, I don't know about you. You can do what you want. I'm going to make it, bless God. Hallelujah. Why? Because I walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good preaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, they said we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. I want you to open your Bible to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Hallelujah. Verse 29. We're going to read verse 29 to verse 31. Got it? Let's read. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon... Do I have anybody in the house that wait upon the Lord? How many of you here, you're waiting upon the Lord? The scripture says, wait upon the Lord, I say, glory to God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How many of you here, you're waiting upon the Lord? Come on, how many of you are waiting upon the Lord? I see a renewal in your strength. Say amen. I see a renewal in the anointing of God over your life. Look in your Bible. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. Glory to God. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, say, say this to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, as you are waiting upon the Lord... He will renew your strength and you will mount up with wings like eagles. Oh, glory to God. I've come to prophesy to you this morning. You are about to be airlifted. Glory to God. You're going to soar, soar far above all cliffs. Soar far above all clouds. Like an eagle. Glory to God. Say amen. You know what an eagle does? Have you ever seen uh, uh, Discovery Channel? I watched a program one time about eagles. One of these days I'll talk to you about the eagles believe, uh, the eagle Christian. Did you know that the eagle's got, you know, he's got his eyes. He can see so far, right? Have you ever wondered why is it that the eagles can soar way up high? Way up high. Thousands of feet in the air and meters in the air. And doesn't need any goggles. Because when he's up, because if you were to go up there, your eye socket, your eye would come out of your socket. But the eagle's got another set of eyelids, in, which is, looks invisible to you and to me. But it comes over his eyes like goggles and protects him. And when an eagle sees a storm, he locks his wings. And causes the wind, allows the wind of the storm to go, cause him to fly even higher and above the storm. Say amen. amen. You were not created by God to be destro destroyed by the storms of life. Amen. Whenever storms come around you, financial storms, uh, health storms, marital storms comes around your, your home, lock your wings, glory to God. And soar above all your problems. Amen? Because you were created by God to fly above your problems. Now, they will mount up as eagles. Which one are you this morning? Are you a grasshopper? Or are you an eagle believer? Now, I know you all saying, I'm an eagle believer. Yes, I am. Yes, amen. That's right. But the proof Remember, I told you the other day. I, Paul says, while the outward man, the outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed what day by day. 
So you have an outward man and you have an inward man. You see my outward man by how I dress, by how I look, by how I comb my hair. But you see my inward man by how I respond to problems, by how I respond to crisis. If you fall apart and fall to pieces in a crisis, Proverbs 24.10, the King James says, If thou faintest in the day of adversity, your strength is small. One Bible says, if you fall to pieces in the day of crisis, then there wasn't much to you to begin with. Now, it's easy to say, I'm, a, I'm an eagle believer when everything is all right, when you got money in your pocket, when there's no pain in your body, huh? when your wife is acting right or your husband is acting right. Are you listening? Or your boss has just promoted you. It's easy to say, I'm an eagle believer. But many times when trials and testing hits us, we'll discover that we're not the eagle or the lion that we're supposed to be. Because when you read the book of Proverbs, the scripture tells us that the, that the righteous are bold like a lion. Amen. And then one thing that you must notice about lions, it says that the lion does not turn away from anything. It doesn't run away from his problem. It doesn't turn away from anything. The lion fears nothing and fears no one. Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise God. He never runs from the devil. Hallelujah. Never runs from sickness and disease. He never runs and has never ran from impossible situations. He's the master of turning impossible into possible. Say amen. amen. Well, if you are his son, if you're connected with him, if you are a joint heir with Christ, then you've got to be an eagle believer or a lion believer. The Blood of Favor by Dr. Glenn Arecchion shows us how salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Then he explains how blessings are within the blood as well. The Blood of Favor is a step-by-step -step process to the victory in your life held in the precious blood of Christ. Discover the sevenfold blessings, keys of protection, and more as outlined by Dr. Arecchion. Get your copy of The Blood of Favor today at bookstores everywhere or by ordering online for $18, including shipping and handling, at glenarecchion.org. Thank you for watching Faith Lift with Pastor Glenn Arecchion. For more information or to contact us, call 502 523 407. Come join us at one of our services at 125 North Lakeview Drive, Brooks, Kentucky, or visit our website for more information, glenarecchion.org.